Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how you can set up your favorite PSD editor as a content creator in Cartoon Animator 4. This is a new feature in version 4.1 that allows you to synchronize the editing results from an external editor with the existing object in Cartoon Animator. The first step is setting up your editor in Cartoon Animator 4. At first you'll see a brush icon at the top, so just select that and then you'll be prompted to set up your preferred application. Regardless of which application you choose, the icon will appear in the toolbar. Keep in mind that only Python users are allowed access to this feature. This tool works with Photoshop, Affinity Designer, Clip Studio Paint, Krita, and PhotoP. If you're on a budget, PhotoP is a free online service. Make sure you're connected to the internet while you're using it. The first step is to select the executable file for your preferred PSD editor. In this case, we're going to be using Photoshop. Once you submit your selection, the icon on your toolbar will change to an icon for the respective application. Next, let's take a look at creating a new object and importing it. We'll start off by clicking on the PSD Launch button, which will start up your editor and synchronize the object in Photoshop and Cartoon Animator. What I'm doing here is just pasting an outline of a tree image and setting the opacity to 20 so I can trace over it. Let's start a new layer so we can draw on it without affecting the background. Now we're going to spend some time drawing on our layer. And then when we're finished, I'm just going to delete the background, since we only need a single layer and we want to have a transparent background in Cartoon Animator as well. Now in order for our object to appear in Cartoon Animator, we need to save it first in Photoshop. Once the image is saved, the two applications will officially be synchronized, and Cartoon Animator will prompt you to select the type of object that you want to create. In this case, since we want to add bones to the branches for animation purposes, we're going to select Free Bone Actor. After it's finished processing, you'll see the object appear at the origin axis for your scene. Let's reposition it slightly so the base is at the scene axis. Now if we take a look at the scene manager, we can see the icon beside the scene under the PSD sync column, which indicates that the project is still synced. Next, let's take a look at updating the image in Photoshop by using the magic wand selection tool to select the tree's outline and then filling it in with white so the tree itself is not transparent. Once we do that, we need to ensure once again that we only have a single layer so we'll need to merge the layers, and once again save the changes in Photoshop. Once that's finished, you'll see the object update in Cartoon Animator with the white fill on the branches. Next, we're going to take a look at how to rig and animate our tree. We'll start off by bringing the tree into Composer mode, and going directly into the Bone Editor. When you do this, the link between the two objects will be broken. I'm going to go through this part a bit faster, as the process is fairly straightforward. We have other tutorials to talk more about bone editing. What I'm doing is adding bones at certain intervals along the branches so that we can create some realistic animation later on. You'll want to make sure that you click the right mouse button when you're finished each branch, then select the base for each branch before continuing to add more bones. After that, we can give it a quick preview to see how we can animate each part of the branches separately. Finally, let's get out of composer mode and back into stage mode to start some animation. For animation, we're going to use the 2D Motion Key Editor. Let's just perform a simple animation by going ahead a few frames in our project and adjusting the position of various bones in our branches. The 2D Motion Key Editor can utilize forward and inverse kinematics on bone structures, so it's a lot easier to realistically animate your object. I'll repeat the same process a couple of times, and at the final position on the timeline, we'll finally press the reset button in order to create a fully loopable animation. In order to play back the loop, I'm clicking and dragging the project length indicator to the last frame of my animation, and then activating loop mode in the play bar. If we play back, we'll see the super basic animation we just created. Next we're going to look at opening an unfinished PSD file, so let's open it again from the same icon in the toolbar. This is an important step because it's required to establish a link between Cartoon Animator and your PSD editor. This time we can see the project is a bit more complicated and has an opaque background. I'm going to fast forward through the next little part here. What I'm doing is essentially adding more layers to our scene and saving each addition onto an individual layer in Photoshop. That way we can really move them around easily and it also helps to create the parallax effect later on in Cartoon Animator, which creates the illusion of depth in a 3D scene. 
Again, we want to make sure that we delete any opaque background as we won't have much use for it in Cartoon Animator. The next step is to save our PSD in Photoshop, which will prompt us to choose an object type to import into Cartoon Animator. In this case, we're going to import in as a scene. Once it's all updated, you'll see the scene appear in Cartoon Animator. From there, we can modify each element of the scene separately and position and scale everything to our desired parameters. We can bring objects back and forth on the z-axis by using the arrow gizmo at the bottom of the selection box of each object. By clicking and dragging on this, you're essentially taking that element further away from or closer to the camera. Now when the camera pans from side to side, objects closer to the camera position on the z-axis will move by faster, while more distant objects will move by slower, creating an illusion of depth known as a parallax effect. To create a more consistent background, we can go into Project Settings and then change our background color to white. We can then test out a couple of elastic motions on different elements in our scene to create a more dynamic entrance. There are a variety of different entrance animations that are embedded in Cartoon Animator 4, but you can also purchase additional presets from the content store as well. Now if we take a look at the scene manager, we can see the icon beside the scene under the PSD sync column, which indicates that the two projects are still synced. And any changes that are saved from the PSD in Photoshop will be updated in Cartoon Animator. Notice that for our G3 actor tree, however, there is no icon there, since we took it into composer mode, which immediately severs the live update link between the two. To re-establish this, we can select the item in our scene manager, right-click it on the stage, and then select Launch PSD Editor. This will automatically launch to your selected editor, and the objects will then synchronize back up. You can confirm this by returning to the scene manager in Cartoon Animator and checking to see if the PSD sync icon is enabled. Let's test it out one more time by adding a few leaves and small branches to the object, and then saving it in Photoshop once again. You'll see that immediately after the processing, the object will be updated in Cartoon Animator. And that's how easy it is to sync your PSD editor with Cartoon Animator for live updates, as opposed to continually saving and re-importing. This workflow saves a ton of time and hassle for those animators who frequently use PSD files in their workflow. Let's play back to see the entire animation sequence loop for us. Note that all of the previous motions are still enabled. As always, thank you so much for watching everyone, and I hope to see you in the next video.